about a little 5x5 five five cube of mini PC glowy RGB stuff? This is from Blackview, and I've looked at some of their tablets in the past, and they make all kinds of things. Tablets, and now they've got mini PCs. And everyone sends me all their mini PCs. This is the Blackview MP100. So you can get this in a few different configurations. And the one we're looking at has the 7430U uh, and 16 gigabytes of memory. So the 7430U is very similar to like a 5850U. Yes, so many numbers. There we go. Six cores, 12 threads, 4.3 gigahertz. And then we also have just Radeon graphics. That's what it is. That's just Radeon. That's it. You want anything else? No, Radeon. That's the graphics card. This is an Intel speed graphics card. That's how we're going to say it, right? Let me show you something right here. You see that price? That's what a retail key costs. That's silly. I always get OEM keys because they work and they're a fraction of the cost. And right now I use whokeys.com to unlock my copies of Windows. I've been heavily advocating for the LTSC versions of Windows because they don't have recall, they don't have any bloat, they don't have any spyware. The Windows 10 LTSC IoT has extended support until 2032. And then we have Windows 11, which is very similar to 10 once you strip all the nonsense off of it. And that has support until October 10th, 2034. You also have Windows 11 Pro and Windows 11 Home. And just ignore these prices. We're going to make them better. We got Windows 10 Pro, but we're at the end of life on that. So just I would recommend grabbing IoT. And then we have two different flavors of Office. Office 2016 Pro and Office 2019. These are offline versions. So you don't have to pay the monthly subscription fee. You just do the one-time fee. And then, you know, you're not going to have Copilot installed inside your copy of Office that's always, you know, watching your stuff, which is weird that Microsoft is doing that now. But yeah, this is the way to get around all that. Just don't sign in with your Microsoft account. So look at all these prices. We've got a coupon over here for the Halloween sale but let's just go through Windows 11 Pro and I'll show you how to save even more money with coupon code TS25. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that. All right, here we just need to press Start and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here it says Not Active. That's okay. Just click on Change Product Key. Paste in our Product Key. Press next and then click on activate. Hey, look at that, active. Now I can come back over here and change my wallpapers and everything else, great. Don't be messing around with those exorbitant retail keys. Grab an OEM key, head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. It looks really nice, in my opinion. That's just subjective. You can feel any way you like, but you see you got your RGB on the outside, RGB. Yes, did I say it right? I'm not feeling well, so I'm a little loopy, but stick with me. You got RGB on the outside and you got some software in Windows that'll let you change through the RGB. So that's the, the top right there. Uh, it's five by five by 1.7 inches, got a nice small footprint. All right, as far as the ports go, here's what we got. On the front, we got USB Type-C, we got two of those. Then we got a USB 3.2 Type-A, it's Gen 2. Then we got 3.5 millimeter audio jack. It's an in and out uh, for headphone microphone and a power button. There's a little CMOS thing hiding right there. On the back, you got your Ethernet port. And then we have uh, USB 2.0 and USB 3.2. 3.2 is on the top. It's Gen 2 as well. Then you got um, DisplayPort. That's a full-size DisplayPort and an HDMI 2.0. I don't know why, but I really like the full-size DisplayPort on this. It's really cool. So we can do three displays. You've got um, DisplayPort 4K, 144 hertz. Uh, then we've got HDMI that'll do 4K at 60 hertz. And the Type-C will do 4K at 60 hertz as well. The Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi 6, and we also have Bluetooth 5.2. Both of those USB-C, by the way, are USB 3.2 Gen 2. There's no USB 4. All right, so let's see what's going on under the hood. Now you flip it over, there's four screws and then a little rubber thing to pull. You just open it up, give it a little bit of tug. Don't pull too hard because there is a ribbon cable on the back of this. And that is because we have a little mount on the inside of the, uh, I guess the back panel where you can put a two and a half inch drive spinning disc or just a SATA drive. So that's kind of a cool bit of expandability. Uh, just, you know, like I said, make sure you don't rip it apart too much. You'll pull the ribbon cable out and then have to deal with that. You don't want to deal with that. Then we have 16 gigabytes of memory. Their website here says dual channel memory. Mine came with one 16 gigabyte stick. That is going to limit your gaming performance. That's going to limit a lot of the performance, but mostly that'll be limiting your gaming performance because that Radeon does share some of the system memory. It's also DDR4. So, you know, all these things are like cost cutting things. And then you can see we have our M.2 right there. Now the system comes with some RGB and uh, we've got our control right here. This comes pre-installed so you can set it up however you like. Turn down the brightness and stuff, put it on breathing, color cycle, uh, turn it on and off or on auto mode. So, so yeah, this controls the, the speed of the animations and this controls the brightness, but 
don't have any options to actually just pick a solid color that I can tell. All right, good enough. It's cool. RGB if you like it. All right, that's the thing. That's what it is. Let's go ahead and test it out and see how it runs. All right, so let's see what the temperatures are doing on this. Now, uh, this is the second time this has happened, but in hardware info, um, before I even opened up the stress test here on the screen, this 82.6 was on the screen. So since doing the test, it's been around the 70s, you know, like 74, 75, somewhere in that range. So I'm gonna say that this thing is relatively cool and also decently quiet. Let's see how loud it is. You know, it's really difficult to get a reading in this room because it's 44.9 just in the room. All right, whatever. Let's see how much louder it is when I put this close to the machine. And close to the machine, we've got 47.4. It's not very loud at all. It's got a lower pitched um, uh, sound, I guess, for something that's this small. So yeah, it's relatively quiet. Now, what kind of games can you play on this? Well, of course you can play all kinds of emulators and ROMs up to GameCube and Dreamcast. Not really PlayStation 2, but you can play quite a few, you know, emulators on this. I'm gonna try out House of the Dying Sun because it's a 3D game, but it's not a huge game. So I'm curious to see how this plays. I just wanna see how this feels, if it feels good to play. Because it certainly looks really good, even though there's not all kinds of stuff going on. Let's see how it feels flying around the world here. You can totally play House of the Dying Sun. I'm not gonna actually get into the game and play too much. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, it was smooth when you started playing and all that. But yeah. I'm not gonna go through the training on this. Anyway, you can totally play games like this. I've been playing Beyond Sunset, so we're gonna try that out. I'm gonna use Vulcan and do full screen, widescreen. Yep, sure. Now it's interesting, I've tested this on some integrated GPUs and it didn't work too well. So this is a Doom mod, but it's not just run and shoot everything. It's more of an immersive sim with Doom Eternal's movement system smacked on top. I'm just gonna run around for a second. See, here's our Doom Eternal movement system, double jump and dash. It feels okay. It feels like we're getting a decent frame rate. Not amazing, but you know, works pretty well. It kind of reminds me of Deus Ex sometimes. Other times Dai Katana. If Dai Katana were, uh, I bet, I guess more interesting. <laughs> Zagatana's later levels are good, but uh, we'll talk about that a different day. Anyway, if you're looking for a new game that looks just like the one I'm playing, and you're looking for Beyond Sunset, and it works just fine on just about any GPU, uh, not an N100, but, you know, works fine on this. And it looks really cool. What's going on up there? That's lewd. My god. Alright, so let's see how this Radeon graphics does in Unigen Valley. We've got 21.6 FPS, score of 903, minimum 14.9. I did expect a little bit more, but, you know, this system's not designed for 3D gaming, so let's see how it does in other things. Okay, in Superposition, we got a score of 1725. This is on 1080p medium, by the way. Average 12.9 frames per second, minimum 11.02. In Geekbench, we got a single-core score of 1875 and a multi-core of 5740. And here are all the individual tests. Just pause if you need to see anything in particular. And then for our open CL score, we got 12, 4, 27. And here are the individual scores. Sedimentch R23. All right, let's take a look at the multi-core. Uh, you know what, I always do single core first, don't I? And you can see it stacks up exactly with the Radeon 7430U. <laughs> so I guess I did a test before I rebooted, very similar. And uh, you can see where it stacks up against the older 11th gen Intels. It's not a brand new part, but uh, it's not a super old part either. Pretty snappy for what it is, I guess. Six cores. And as far as the multi-core goes, you can see there again where it stacks up. Slower than the old Ryzen 7 1700X, but faster than an Intel i7 7700K by a little bit. So 7204 on the multi and 1396 on the single core. All right, let's check the M.2 speeds. So I'd say this is like what you would consider average if you're thinking about PCI Express Gen 3. 3556 on the read and 2649 on the write. Let's take a look at the IOPS. That's ins and outs per second and both over 100,000, which I think is very good for this system. 122 on the read and 103 on the write. All right, so there you have it. I mean, I do like these Ryzen's. If you need a few cores and want to be able to do a few things, they're fine. But, you know, I think the Radeon, if you spend a little bit more 
sometimes you can get a 7840HS with a 780M and that'll play games at like 10 times the speed. So it's like, how much do you care about gaming? If you don't care about gaming, this is probably okay, but you know, you can spend that much more and get something with a 780M and have a lot more gaming power, maybe even USB 4, maybe even DDR5. So all of that kind of stuff. Maybe you'll also have, I, I don't know, the dual gigabit ethernet. There's all kinds of different options. So I feel like this is somewhere in the middle when it comes to just all the options that you get. And I do think that the GPU that comes with this is kind of whatever. I mean, like I said, it's Intel grade. It's If Intel can move a lot of their systems, then this is the AMD answer to that because it's very similar to like um, Intel around this point. So anyway, that is what it is. I think the case is nice. There's that. You can mount it behind your monitor if you want to with the Visa mount that comes in, in the box. But yeah. Anyway, works great, built well, and uh, not much to complain about other than AMD's slower than uh, it should be graphics card. So let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time.